It's estimated that 20 to 30 million Americans are at risk for vascular disease. It includes any condition that affects your circulatory system or system of blood vessels, from diseases of your arteries, veins, and lymph vessels to blood disorders that affect circulation. The good news is with early detection, vascular disease can be treated effectively. Welcome to the Live Greater podcast series, information for a healthier you from the University of Maryland Medical System. I'm Cheryl Martin, and joining me today to talk about vascular screenings and how they can save your life is Deidre Smith, a vascular surgery nurse practitioner at the University of Maryland Baltimore Washington Medical Center. Glad to have you on, Deidre. Thank you so much for having me, Cheryl. I'm glad to be here. Tell us about the symptoms of vascular disease. Sure. So vascular disease can present in many different ways. Namely, there are three major areas where we expect vascular disease to manifest. One could be signs or symptoms of a stroke. And so that would indicate possibly some level of carotid artery disease, which are the arteries in your neck that take blood flow up to the head and the brain area. Another symptom could be unrelenting abdominal or back pain. And this would raise suspicion for a possible abdominal aortic aneurysm which is an enlarging or ballooning out of the aorta, which is the main artery that runs down the center of the chest into the abdomen. And then lastly, leg pain. Leg pain or wounds on the feet that won't heal are usually indicative of some type of vascular component of peripheral artery disease, where there's buildup of plaque in the arteries that supply the legs, causing what we call claudication or cramping of the muscles during activity, or wounds on the feet that cause prolonged or delayed healing. Tell us about a vascular screening and how that can make a difference. Sure, vascular screenings can make a great difference, especially for our older patients that have multiple chronic conditions or a very strong family history of vascular disease. Early detection is key in order for us to restore blood flow to pertinent areas and organs of the body, of course, which will decrease long-term morbidity and ultimate mortality. Are there different types of screenings? Yes, there are different types of vascular screenings that we conduct. We do carotid artery screenings, which again are the arteries in the neck that take blood flow up to the head and the brain. This is done simply by ultrasound surveillance as well as ultrasound of the abdomen to detect any type of aneurysm that may or may not be present. And then also a Doppler ultrasound of the legs to evaluate blood flow, the percentage of blood flow that you're receiving to the legs and to the feet. So those are the three main areas of vascular feeding that we offer. Now, Deidre, you mentioned the elderly are prime candidates for this. Should a person ask for vascular screening without having any of these symptoms? So I would say that anyone over the age of 60 years old, especially those with chronic conditions such as diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, any history of smoking, tobacco, or any strong family history of arterial disease or vascular disease should request screening. Those would be the people who would be at highest risk for detecting any vascular concerns that may not present any symptoms. Do you find that a lot of people know to ask for this screening, especially those at risk? So actually, no. I would say unless someone has a strong family history and has dealt with these vascular concerns with their family members or loved ones before, normally their primary care doctor is the first person that they would go to with any issues and that we would normally see a referral for a vascular screening from their primary care provider, but it is usually unlikely that people would normally request a vascular screening on their own. But it is a good idea based on what you're saying. So what diseases can the screening catch? You've mentioned some of them. Absolutely. It's a great idea to get a vascular screening. So carotid artery disease, again, would detect any type of plaque buildup or cholesterol accumulation in the arteries that take blood flow up to the head and the brain. When this perpetuates or worsens, this can cause or put you at risk for stroke. 
And of course, with a stroke, we know that that can cause several different disabilities depending on the severity of the stroke. Also for abdominal aortic aneurysms, as I mentioned before, those have the propensity to enlarge over time and eventually rupture if they're not caught in a timely manner and repaired. Likewise, with the lower extremities, plaque buildup on the inside of the arteries that take blood flow down to the legs and feet can cause wounds that won't heal, that would sometimes eventually progress to gangrene. And then we are looking at the possibility of someone becoming at risk for amputation. So a vascular screening can be the first step in life-sustaining repair of these conditions. What happens during the screening? So the screening is totally painless. And during the screening, someone would meet with our vascular technologists who would go through a host of questions just to evaluate the patient a little bit more, ask a few questions about their lifestyle, whether or not they've experienced or are exhibiting any of the symptoms that we previously discussed in order to get just a better idea of any concerns that they may have or any further testing that may need to be done. And an ultrasound screening is performed. As I said, it's totally painless. When an ultrasound probe is used on the neck, the abdomen, and the legs to detect these issues. How long does it take? A vascular screening should take about an hour. And that's the culminative of time between the patient meeting with the vascular technologist having the ultrasounds performed, as well as a short discussion with a provider, nurse practitioner or physician afterwards to review the results of their studies. And once you get the results, does the nurse practitioner or the physician then give an analysis of what should change, let's say, in your lifestyle? Sure. So there's much discussion about smoking cessation for those who do smoke lifestyle changes, namely diet and exercise changes, as well as recommendations for follow-up in our office for an appointment. Sometimes if asymptomatic vascular disease is detected, we would recommend that they continue to follow up with our office on a routine basis to manage these things. How do you request an appointment? Is it by doctor referral only, or can you schedule one on your own for a screening? Sure. So doctors can definitely refer patients for a screening, but we also accept self-referrals. So it can be a self-referral or a referral from another physician or provider. Now, does health insurance cover the screenings? The screenings are totally free of charge. We do not bill insurance or ask for any type of payment for these vascular screenings. Anyone can call and request a screening and come in and receive an initial screening. And then from the results of those screenings, We can further direct them in terms of follow-up care if needed or refer them back to their primary care physicians with a small little report sheet as to what was found or, you know, that their tests were normal so that they can keep them on file for their records. That's great. Anything else you'd like us to know about vascular screenings that we didn't cover? So vascular screenings, I think, again, I just wanted to drive home the point that they're imperative for patients who have a heavy smoking history or heavy family history of vascular concerns, anyone over the age of 60, namely with multiple chronic conditions such as hypertension, high cholesterol, diabetes, those patients are usually the ones that we find either have asymptomatic disease, meaning they do have positive findings on the ultrasound, even though they don't manifest any symptoms of vascular disease, but also those that if a situation or a complication from vascular disease would occur, that they seem to progress very fast. So just urging everyone, if any of those things apply to you, that you get a vascular screening done to make sure that you're not at risk. Because it could save your life. Absolutely. Absolutely, Cheryl. Deidre Smith, thanks so much for talking about the importance of vascular screenings. To find a location for vascular screening, visit umms.org vascular. 
That's umms.org slash vascular. And thank you for listening to Live Greater, a health and wellness podcast brought to you by the University of Maryland Medical System. You can find more shows just like this one at umms.org slash podcast and on the University of Maryland Medical System's YouTube channel. We look forward to you joining us again.